the bit is the key of the digital age. And, and this is how these two gentlemen conceptualized it. This is now a little theoretical excursion, the, the mathematical theory of, you know, of information and communication as conceptualized by Claude Shannon and, and, and with many innovations afterwards. And what Claude Shannon basically said is that information is the opposite of uncertainty. I mean, that, that makes sense. You don't have to be a mathematician for that, right? I mean, if you have uncertainty, you don't have information. And if I give you information, what happens to uncertainty? Well, it gets reduced, right? I mean, I give you a lot, give you a lot of information, then you don't have uncertainty anymore. So he said, well, if we can, we can, measure, un we can measure uncertainty with probabilities. Hence, <laughs> we can measure the other side of the coin, which is information. So basically, it's a probabilistic theory where he measures information as the reduction of uncertainty. How much uncertainty do you reduce? And if you reduce uncertainty by half, he said, well, that's, that's one bit. So one bit, it also depends. You know, you have probably a different uncertainty than I have. It's a very subjective, it's a genius, genius theory, information theory, as conceptualized by Claude Shannon. Now, what Kolmogorov came up with a few years later, it says, well, the same bit can actually help to create algorithmic information. An algorithm is basically a recipe, and we will talk much more about algorithms, which are extremely important, the basis also of computer science, where you basically an algorithm is a recipe that describes something. And I can, for example, now say, well, I have something here. I have some information and I can compute this information or I can communicate this information for you. And Shannon always referred to the game of 20 questions. So I say, I think about a city in the United States and I think about it. Now I have two ways of communicating to you or computing to you what that city is. I can reveal it to you by reducing uncertainty. And if you play that game well, you always reduce uncertainty by half. That's the most efficient way. That means you communicate one bit. So you can say, well, is it on this side or that side of the Mississippi, right? Is it north or south? And, and then you reduce uncertainty by half. And at the end, I tell you, well, the city is, I don't know, it's Los Angeles or San Francisco or it's New York or whatever city I had in mind. And I reduce the uncertainty by half many times. So Shannon called it the game of 20 questions. I mean, with 20 questions, if you choose uncertainty by half, you can pick out one out of a list than more than a million different cities. So you can, in, in the United States, you can get to, to every city you want to get. But I could also compute the answer. How do I do that? Well, I give you a recipe of how to drive to the city. And it turns out that the number of bits I need on average to describe how to drive to that city that I have in mind, let's say I have San Francisco in mind, is on average, asymptotically, the same number of bits I need to communicate the city to you. And that also kind of like makes sense if, if you think about it. So in the words of Coven Thomas, the authors of the standard textbook and information theory, they say, it is an amazing fact that the expected length of the shortest binary computer description a random variable is approximately equal to its entropy. Entropy is the measure of probabilistic information. And in the words of Lee and Vitanji, the authors of the uh, leading textbook on Kolmogorov complexity, they say it's a beautiful fact that these two notions turn out to be much the same. That means that informational bits and knowledge bits are on average, you need, you need the same, you can reveal it or you can describe it, but it's kind of like the same amount that you need, two, two sides of a coin. Then, and, and, and think about it like just to give you another example. So for example, I can say like, okay, I have information here, I have this animal, and what I have in mind is an elephant. Now I have two options, I can reveal it, I can identify this animal from all non-elephants, most animals are non-elephants, and I can communicate it to you like that. Or I can describe the elephant bit by bit. And the amazing and beautiful fact is that they turn out to be the same notion. So, But first we had to learn as humanity how to deal with information, how to communicate, to reveal it. And now we are learning how to compute, how to describe 
how to generate, create uh, these things. And look, when, when hardcore mathematicians, like these textbook authors, and these are really mathematical, I mean, there are more equations in there than sentences probably. Uh, and when they get almost like teary-eyed and use words like amazing and beautiful, then the rest of us have to listen. You know, this is really, I mean, this is a, a really amazing uh, theorem that they come together. And it's currently, uh, I wanted to show you as well, the science behind it. It's not very old, the science is not very old. It's from the 1940s, 1960s, when these, uh, these fundamental theories have been worked out. And these are the mathematical results that we build the information society and the knowledge society on. So if you're up for it, in your free time, I, of course, strongly invite you to, to study that or maybe in grad school, because this is the scientific language that also I use, and that's, that is the scientific language, the mathematical description of what the digital paradigm is actually based on. It is a very concrete theoretical background. Now, we will not go through that in this course. In this course, we will talk about the social construction of these theoretical results. But I wanted to start also to say that, yes, uh, both information and knowledge have mathematical theories behind them, really serious ones. I mean, these textbooks, they are really big, and these are the standard textbooks only.